So your boss comes to you and says, Listen, sport, I need you to go through these logs quickly and find all of the IP addresses that are in there. And while you are at it, make sure that you get also all of the email addresses. Compose a list of most popular domains. Oh, and one more thing. Could you change the format of the date? Swap the date and the time, please? That will be just a minute, right? Right. So what do you do? Are you writing a program to do all that and then maybe another one when the boss changes his mind once again? One quick substitution to replace time and date in place, another one for email addresses with capturing groups on the domain, and a quick one-liner to match all of the IP addresses in your logs. It will actually take only a couple of minutes because you're gonna use the power of regular expressions. So get ready and let's begin. All right, so what are regular expressions? Well, basically it's an engine that is available in many, many tools, in all the text editors. They are available in all your IDEs, and of course they are available in many, many programming languages, including Java, C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, Perl, Python, Ruby, and so on and so forth. So you are basically learning a tool that will stay with you for a very, very long time and it's extremely powerful. Every programmer should have regular expressions in his tool belt. So if you don't know them yet, this video is exactly for you. So as I said, regular expressions are quite powerful. They will allow you to find things that match the pattern, that's one, to replace the part of entire pattern that you matched. And in that replace, you can actually use parts of your text that your pattern matched. And also using special capturing groups, you're able to extract bits and pieces of your text. And for example, with text full of email addresses, you're able to extract email addresses and also separate username and domain of that email address. And lastly, but not leastly, you're able to check if certain piece of text is of certain type. Does it match certain pattern? For example, is it an email address, IP address, maybe a postcode, telephone number, something like that. So as you can see, regular expressions are quite powerful. But before we dive into them, let's actually clear up some confusion that is, well, often caused by some multiplicity of information that you can find online. So when you look at regular expressions online, you may find multiple examples and somehow they may not work in your particular tool. Why is that? Hmm, well, there are different flavors of regular expressions. Plainly speaking, multiple engines written by multiple people at different stages of evolution of regular expressions. Most commonly known uh, engine is PCRE, which stands for Perl Compatible Regular Expressions. Of course, there are some small quirks when it comes to programming languages, for example, the engine in JavaScript is a bit different from the Python one or the PCRA when PHP or Perl. So just keep that in mind. And when you're looking up examples online, be sure to check what flavor are you actually looking at and make sure that you're following the right one for your use case. Aha, and I will put a link to comparison table uh, down in the description. So if you want to check what are the differences, you can quickly look it up. Having that said, let's actually move on to regular expressions. When you're learning regular expressions, the best way of doing this is actually by practice. And I have really good tool for testing out your regular expressions, debugging them. It's called Regexer. I'm linking to, the, to it down below in the description. Make sure that you're going to follow this course with uh, Regexer as your go-to testing platform, your playground. Okay, so how does the regular expression look like? Well, it's built out of the three things. And these are pattern, substitution, and flags. Pattern is of course mandatory and substitution and flags are optional. And you separate them with slash. So what does the pattern consist of? Well, we can see that pattern has symbols in it. So one symbol could match one character or multiple characters or no characters at all. 
So your symbols can match a place in a string, like beginning of the text. They can match a particular character, like an A or B or C, or they can match a group of characters. So then you can build some groups of those symbols and say, this group should occur between zero and 12 times or something like that. So for example, when you're searching for a number, you could say, oh, I actually want to match a digit one or more times, however many. So let's dive into the symbols that we can actually use in our regular expressions. So we have like five groups of things at our disposal. We have literals, character classes, arm cores, quantifiers and alternation, groups and look around. So literals are nothing else than plain string. When we want to match a particular word like Bob or Alice, this is exactly what we need to put in our pattern letter by letter. Note that regular expressions are case sensitive for anything that is a literal unless it's specified otherwise by a flag. We'll get to that later. But right now just remember this. So plain characters will basically match exactly that plain characters. Everything else that is not a plain character is a symbol. It's actually easier to learn the symbols first and then deduct from that, okay, everything else is a plain character. So when we use our symbols and we actually want to match the plain character, not the symbol, we will escape the symbol with backslash. So for example, a dollar is a symbol. And if we want to match exactly a dollar sign, we just type backslash dollar. And that means we are searching for a piece of string that contains a dollar sign in it. So backslash also is used to denote some special ASCII characters like backslash N, which denotes new line, backslash R, backslash T, so on and so forth. So if you're interested in those, I'm attaching a link to ASCII table in the description. And with backslash, we can also denote characters by their character code. So for example, with backslash U, F, 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 we can denote a Unicode character. You can also use hexadecimal or octal notation if that's your thing. Okay, onto the character classes, the actual meat of regular expressions. First character class, first character symbol that we are going to look at is the dot. So if you want to match the actual dot, of course use backslash dot. But if you want to match any other character that is not a new line, use the dot. It acts like a wildcard. It will match any character from A to Z, any digit, any symbol, anything you like. It's basically one single character that can be anything you like. Okay, on to the next character class. Next character class is basically a word character and it's denoted by backslash W. So note that the backslash W is actually lowercase. If you want to denote any word character, you use backslash lowercase W. And what that actually means, any word character, basically anything from A to Z, upper or lowercase, and also digits and underscore. So by using backslash W, you will match exactly one character, A to Z, digits or underscore. All right, so what happens if you actually use uppercase W? Well, uppercase for character classes means a negation. And this is a rule for other character classes as well. Uppercase means match everything that does not belong in this particular character class. So for W, this means match everything that is not a word character. So maybe a, a symbol, maybe a space, maybe a new line or something like that. Anything that is not a word character. Okay, next character class is white space, backslash S. And as explained previously, lowercase s. If you want to match negation of white space, so everything that is not a white space character, use capital S. Right, so what is a white space? Well, basically everything that is not a printed character. So new line, tabs, actual spaces, and also less common uh, white space characters like vertical tab. And last but not least, digit. Denoted, of course, with backslash D. Digits are basically any single number from zero to nine, and that's it. So if you want to match a digit, all you have to do is type backslash D. Of course, lowercase for digits and uppercase for not digits. Anything that is not a digit, backslash uppercase D. Okay, so if you want to actually build your custom character class, you come up with a set. So what are those sets? Well, 
Sets are made of symbols that you decide. So if I want a set of A, B and C, I'm just going to open a square bracket, put A, B and C in it, and that means that the whole square bracket will be treated as one character that matches A, B or C, a single symbol to match any of those three. And if I like, I can add a character class inside this set. So for example, A, B and C and backslash D would mean that I would match anything that is A, B or C or a digit. So as you can tell, it's very easy to denote your custom type of character that you'd like. For example, if I want to match a hexadecimal digit, all I have to do is come up with a set that contains letters from A to F and backslash D. Simple and convenient. So what should I do when I want to negate this, when I want to match any character that is not a particular element in this set? All you have to do is to put the circum accent or this little chevron shaped uh, thing that is under over the number six on your keyboard as a first element of your set. So if this character is at first spot in your set, anything in that set would be not matched for this set. Okay, so let's take a look at another type of set called range. As you can guess by the name, basically range allows you to skip uh, typing every single character you want to have in your set. All you have to do is type, type A dash Z and you'll have anything from A to Z included in your set. You can also denote the set of case insensitive letters, but be sure to start with uppercase A and end on lowercase Z. And that is because uppercase letters are in front of lowercase letters in ASCII table. And you can even use symbols or other distinct characters from ASCII and put a dash between them. So you actually have a set between all of the symbols or something like that. And that's all for character classes. There are many more elements of regular expressions that we are going to learn, but that will happen next week. So meanwhile, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.